So I get it. You're a clever dude. You went to university, you got a master's. For the most part, you aren't even rude. But yes, I take offence when you try to speak for me on abortion, women's health, and pay equality. Your lived experience as an old white guy, on the right guy, doesn't make you right, guy. <laughs> I'm so sick of these heathens telling me how to love, like they didn't read Corinthians 14.3. <laughs> no, please, continue mansplaining how your religion makes you better than me, how you're more than willing to take my taxes and bean count every fee, but won't take, even take the time to discuss the causality and frivolity of having a plebiscite on marriage equality. <laughs> I'd like to be your wife, but I'm a second-class citizen. It's nice to meet you. I'll even put my hand up as I politely greet you. But wait until I tell you I'm part of the LGBTIQ. You'll ask me, what's that? I'll have to call you Blue because I couldn't buy you enough fucking clues. <laughs> you want to talk about the age of entitlement? How about you have some introspection? Reflect, reflect on the current levels of societal rejection. You sit up there on top of that cosy, negative-geared tree looking down on people like me. Now, I'm not saying that you haven't had a hard time, that you haven't had to struggle, that you haven't had to live off a singular dime, but what I am saying is that right now, if you don't acknowledge your privilege, I may as well move back to my 10-person village, play some cribbage, and retire to a life in the quagmire devoid of desire until I expire. I guess it would be easier for you if I just went away, if I kept pretending like I had nothing to say, but I'm done doing that. Let's start a new order. I'm going to put my brain towards bringing a national reorder. Ding. Get on board, take some paraphernalia. The next stop's a progressive Australia. <laughs> that was a lot of cheering and clapping. Yeah. Fortunately, we have judges to sort Georgie out. <laughs> So that's a little room to move. Well, actually a lot, because, you know, 9.5 to 10, there's a lot of decimal places. So. <laughs> someone, someone from 3 10, who gets counted by? What? Yeah, alright. I won't get into how maths works. People will get into that logic, because it doesn't quite work that way, but alright. Um, alright. I really want it, but... I'll move on. Del. Ten. Ten from Del. <laughs> There's ever someone to crush the hopes and dreams of one poet, it's another poet. <laughs> Fran. Eight. Eight. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> JP. Yeah, it had great rhythm and rhyme and uh, also important political issues and references to Bible, everything in it. So <laughs> I have to give everything. It, and, yeah, everything I can think of. So, uh, but unlucky to be drawn so early, so I have to leave a bit of room just in case. So I'll give it nine. Yeah. Nine. Just in case you get really drunk and you just want to scream tense. <laughs> well, no alcohol until after. Uh, after. Oh, he's taking your responsibilities very seriously. I do. Yeah, all right. <laughs> Whoa, there you are. <laughs> Rocky Road. Very powerful. Nine and a half. Nine and a half. <laughs> Whoa. 